You notice it straight away. There's something very different about Greg Norman. For one thing, he's more open, more willing to reveal himself. And what he reveals is a man whose whole life has been turned upside down. First, there was the painful breakdown of his marriage and those nasty rumours. Then, his father was diagnosed with cancer. But, as sometimes happens, there were some unexpected consolations. Greg and his dad have a new, much closer relationship. And after more than 20 years, he's spending time really getting to know his two kids. A few years ago, all this would have been off-limits with the shark. Not anymore. That's Greg Norman out there. Not the Greg Norman we know on the golf course. He's admiring from the shore. It's Greg Norman Jr. finding his own place in the sun in a vastly different sport. I'm proud of him. I really am proud of him. I'm proud of him because, you know what, he's done it on his own. Now, you're not one of those sideline parents, are you, Greg? No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you, you see, he'll do it all himself. At 21, Gregory Norman is an elite sportsman in his own right, making a name on the professional kiteboarding circuit. And like his father, he's driven by individual success. To do it on your own and push yourself rather than have someone with you the whole time. That's what I like most about it. And that's very much what your dad did throughout his whole career, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He reckons you've got the same intensity that uh, he has when it comes to sport. I got more. <laughs> I got more. This is where you're most likely to find Greg Norman these days, close to his kids. At 51, the great white shark has softened. Approaching what he calls the back nine of his life, it's a time to reflect. You can press everything I've ever done in 51 years. Golf, business, life, ups and downs, but it just, you cannot compare to what's going on right now. And it's just, you get to learn your inner soul, boy, I tell you what, it's, it, it, it pulls at you. It's been a tough 12 months, a cancer scare for his father, challenging times with his two children and the breakdown of his near 30-year marriage have forced the seemingly unstoppable Norman to finally pause and take a good hard look at himself. I learn about life. I learn, I've actually, most importantly, I've learned about myself. You know, I know that I am opening up. I know that I'll come out this or this whole period of time as a better person at the other side. Greg Norman is one of golf's greats. He dominated the game as world number one for nearly seven years and turned his sporting success into a global business empire amassing a personal fortune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Fortunately for me, uh, I had the determination, the, 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 the natural determination to strive to be the best I could be at whatever I, my chosen path I was going to go down. And, uh, and that's what, what golf is it. It's still hard to believe he didn't pick up a golf club until he was 16. It was his mum, Toyney, who encouraged him and he famously pledged to deliver her the British Open trophy, a promise he kept in 1986 and again in 1993. This looks very special, Tony. This is the trophy Greg promised. His first British Open trophy. Is it true that the day Greg won the British Open, you went out and won a tournament yourself? Oh, yes. Yes, I did, at Royal Queensland. I won the club championships at Royal Queensland. So on both sides of the globe, you've got your yeah. son winning the British Open and you're winning at Royal Queensland. That's right. And Greg said I was trying to uh, take the limelight off him. <laughs> <laughs> but Greg's father, Merv, an engineer, was not as supportive of his son's career choice. He was worried Greg was wasting his time on the golf course. I always had that concern in those early days. Well, Greg, you better do something that's going to earn you a living for the rest of your life. He wanted me to, to follow in his footsteps and that wasn't 
what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted at the time, but I just knew I didn't want to do that. Um, I had to find myself and where I was going, and so that was a bit hard on my father. Um, so we had this strained relationship because we didn't have this connection of understanding where I wanted to go in life. Where he wanted me to go was different to where I wanted to go, so our paths kind of just quietly broadened. Strained, maybe, yes, there were at times like that, but there was never a barrier there. It might have been strained, but it was never a barrier. You want to be able to go on the driving range and hit golf balls with your son, you know. You want your father to say, OK, let's go to the golf course and let's play. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't that type of relationship coming up. And, it, 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 you know, you, that's probably why I just took off, to tell you the truth. And that's why I was driven to be, uh, to establish myself in such a level that, uh, OK, OK, Dad, see, I did OK. Yeah, you know, I kind of proved you wrong. And and did he say to you, yes, son, you did okay, well done, you won oh, the yeah, British Open? Oh, yeah, latter years, yeah, yeah. yeah of late. Of, of late? Of, of late, yeah. I mean, of late, I mean, in the last 10 years. And what were you trying to prove? I had to go out there and, you know, prove my father that there were other things in life outside of his focus and what he wanted. So what has he proved to you? That he can do it. <laughs> and I think that's a reasonable comment. <laughs> Did you think he could do it? Yes, I did. Yes. In his quest to be the best, it wasn't only his relationship with his father that suffered. Because I was so focused on doing that, nothing, I never really saw too much around me. I was just chat, tunnel vision. Um, so I really, you know, I, I really didn't pay attention to certain things that I should have paid attention to. Now, how can you do it all? You really can't. He moved his family around the world to chase his dream. Young Gregory and sister Morgan Lee rarely saw their dad as he travelled the international circuit. You don't really get to know about it until now when you're 50, uh, now when they're 24, 21, you know, and they can talk to you about, hey dad, you know, this is what we felt back then. They understood what your position was. We understood that you had to go away. We understood that you're a professional golfer and, and all that, but they still remember the fact you weren't home. This, this um, tree right here is yeah. called an African tulip. Throughout it all, his wife Laura was by his side. One of sport's most enduring partnerships. But in May this year, they announced they were divorcing. They refused to say why, other than no third party was involved. I think there's a tendency for people, I, I felt this, that divorce means failure. Mm -hmm. Has it meant that to you? No, it hasn't meant failure to me. Uh, first of all, um, my marriage uh, produced two wonderful children. Um, and, you know, when you look back on it, yeah, sure. Did I have a, period of, a long period of time with my wife? Absolutely, I did. Unfortunately, things in life change. Just this week, though, came speculation of a romantic link with former tennis great Chris Evert. You know what the whole thing about the divorce is? Is divorce should be between two people, and that's it. Uh, what I don't like about this process is because people think that you're a public figure, mm -hmm. that you know rumours and innuendos can go out there, and that's what hurts you the most because you know people. Some people don't like you. Some people want to see you come tumbling down for whatever reason. And that's where I'm having a struggle with it because people want to uh, speculate. Um, and so, anyway, I'll just leave it at that. And it, it, it just, it's just tough. And like one in three Australian couples, the Normans are going through the painful business of dividing up the assets. In their case, more than most nearly $300 million worth. And the other thing that I hate about divorce is that stupid lawyers. <laughs> I can tell you that. It is just... I tell my lawyer, I, guess I get more mad at my lawyers <laughs> because I say, you know what, you guys are going to look at this thing as a business deal. You know, this is what the two clients want. Get the job done. Move on. Because... We are going to run into each other. Our children are going to be married. So you want to make sure the exit strategy out of this relationship 
is the way it should be for our children going forward so you make sure that, okay, we do stay friends and we do bump into each other and it's not like, you know, like that stuff, but I'm sure it happens. But at the end of the day, we did have 27 years together um, and 27 years just simply came to an end. At nearly the same time, Norman's father Merv was diagnosed with bowel cancer and recently underwent surgery. The double crisis has eased the years of tension between father and son, and after the breakup, Norman finally found comfort in his dad's advice. I know he's there, and I can pick up the phone with him and talk to him about it, even though he hasn't experienced it. You know you have a foundation there that you can go, hey, Dad, this is what's happening, you know. And all of a sudden you can feel the love coming out and you go, there it is, after 51 years. After 51 years? Well, I'm 51 now. The love has come. You've felt that connection oh, yeah. with your father. Which is great because now, you know, we've got, um, now you, what's done is done. So now as I look forward, you know, I go visit my father in hospital, uh, you know, you look at him in a different light and you go, you know, I'm glad he's here. You know, simple as that. So in a perverse way, your divorce has brought you strangely closer to your dad. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The bond between father and son really coming together. Yeah, it did. It, it, it amazes me, actually, that it did come together. And I'm sure both of us sensed that. He's a much more relaxed person now than he was before. And I think a lot of that is... He's achieved so much in life that he, that he can certainly afford to relax. It's almost fair to say I'm talking to a new Greg Norman, more reflective, perhaps just a little less driven. I can sense a, a more openness about you. I met you five years ago, I spent a week with you, and I can feel you opening up a bit more. And Every, you know what, Peter? Everybody around me has said that. Uh, people have noticed a different. Even my, my sister said, you're a different person now. More mellow, more soft, more in touch? Uh, I think I'm more in touch with myself. Mm. And in touch with his kids. He's spending more time with Gregory. And with his daughter, Morgan Lee, who just happens to have found romance on the golf course with one of the hottest players on the planet, Spaniard Sergio Garcia. Have you whispered in Sergio's ear and said, this is my girl, you look after her? <laughs> you know what, they're adults. You know, they're adults. <laughs> oh, come on, you're a dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, um, you know, when my daughter tells me that he, he is the consummate gentleman, that's all you need to be told. Golf may have taken a back seat to business and his personal life, but it's still in his blood. It's, it's me slow to there. He's just released his new book and he's back in training, so he can return next month for the Australian Open. When I last spoke to you, you said the mix of golf business was 60-40. Mm -hmm. What is it now? Oh, probably 25 golf and 75 business. And that's probably generous too, because Peter, I, you know, like I said, it, it's hard for me to get out there and hit golf balls for two hours, let alone ten hours, like I used to. Um, you know, it just hurts. Simple as that. Greg Norman has achieved more than most in his life sporting acclaim, international fame and extreme wealth. But like many before him, it seems he's finding the most important things are the ones closest to home. You know, I'm young still. And I still have a passion for life. I still try to keep myself pretty fit. And, uh, you know, where I go uh, privately, you know, who knows? But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm sure I'm going to be OK with that too. But you know one thing the world will be watching? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it will be. <laughs>